right, uh, first a little housekeeping. Is anyone in this room an attorney or a process server who is working on behalf of Craig Wright? <laughs> Ooh, we might have one in here. Well, in that case, uh, Jameson Lopp was unable to be here today. My name is Mike Kern, and I'm going to be standing in on behalf of Jameson Lopp. Um, <laughs> So, Jameson put together 65 slides, but was only given 15 minutes to get through them all. So, uh, I'm going to do my roast beef impression. But really, what we're doing here today is presenting the results of some uh, stress tests on metal uh, seed storage devices. So, I know the Bill Foddle guys are out there, and uh, we'll see how well they did. Uh, th they were a little unhappy with my stress test last year, so I went back and redid some of them. Uh, what is our threat model here? Specifically, we are not going to be talking about the, the physical theft uh, possibilities that might happen. That is kind of a separate talk. What I'm going to be talking about is the potential for natural disasters lost due to fire, flood, uh, some sort of massive building collapse, what have you. And so we're going to be testing heat, corrosion, and crushing. And your particular use case or things that you might be worried about, of course, will vary depending on your own living situation and the various uh, hazards that you are exposed to in your day-to-day -day life or in whatever situation you decide to place your metal seed storage devices. When we're talking about fire resistance, this is probably the most common thing that people need to worry about, house fire, really any building that might uh, burn down. And we can see that the, the melting points of various metals are fairly well known, and the vast majority of the devices that are on the market are made out of various types of steel, which usually melts around 2,500 Fahrenheit, 1,371 Celsius. And the, the average house fire, I think, is only around uh, 1,100 Fahrenheit. When we're looking at corrosion resistance, uh, this is the galvanic scale, which is really more for rust resistance. But um, there really wasn't enough time to wait around and see how many years it takes for things to rust. So my corrosion tests were actually a very strong muriatic acid, which may or may not be something that you actually have to worry about, but was nevertheless uh, some interesting results we got from that. Finally, crush resistance, the hardness of metals is also fairly well known, though even within the uh, steel alloys, there's a number of different types of steel, and so the hardness there can vary. But let's get started with the contenders. There were about 13 different devices that got tested this time around, more than double of what was tested uh, last year. And um, most of them were probably around $30 to $50 in price, though the priciest one was the crypto tag there, which was close to $300 US dollars, but a very high-end kit. So we're testing the block plate, which is just a very simple steel plate, which you use a center punch to put holes in to uh, denote your letters and their positions. Uh, we're testing the block stream metal, of course, why not? the cold bit passphrase, which is just a hexagonal piece of steel, the cold bit steel, uh, which is uh, a companion piece to the cold bit passphrase, but also really just two steel plates, uh, cold storage coins, which are more of a decorative type thing. They have your uh, private key laser etched onto them. Crypto tag, as I said, a very high-end kit where it comes with its own stamping template, uh, which in my opinion, uh, is probably one of the most user-friendly stamping devices out there. Uh, Crypto Vault, which I believe is titanium, uh, but you can, you can both etch and stamp into most of these things. Uh, one thing worth noting, which hopefully you can tell, I tried a, a few different varieties of etching and, and stamping, where on the left, the lighter stuff is a freehand, where I was just taking a Dremel and trying to write it. Uh, whereas the, the better formed, darker ones that are large are using a template, which I found allowed you to get a lot more pressure and thus uh, engrave a much deeper cut into the metal. And this made a difference, as you'll see later in the test. And then, of course, there's the regular stamping, which is just taking a steel bit, hitting it with a hammer. The HODL wallet is uh, also quite similar to uh, Blockstream Metal, 
which is the rebranded Bill Foddle, which is based upon an open source design called uh, CryptoSteel. The Kiwa capsule is another one of these more artistic devices. It's a, a couple of steel rings that are encased in glass and other metals. And they also have the public and private key uh, preset on them by the creator. Seed steel uh, is really just two thin sheets of steel sandwiched between two thick sheets of steel. Interestingly enough, this company seems to have already gone out of business, uh, which is unfortunate because it actually did reasonably well in the test. Uh, Simbit is another style of uh, tile-based, but it is not uh, the uh, same as the Billfoddle. It, it is not the open source uh, crypto steel design. It's rather using a much smaller set of tiles, which are uh, very challenging to actually get into the device. Uh, steel disk is yet another one, which it seems to be the same shape as the crypto steel. At least the tiles and the rails are the same, but it's a different configuration. And then the steel wallet is basically the same as the block plate, just very simple piece of steel that you use a center punch to put your dots into. So we start with the trial by fire. One of the differences between the 2018 tests and these tests are that I got some feedback from manufacturers saying that I was using a very small butane torch, which had a, a probably only about a half a centimeter uh, width diameter on the flame, and they argued that I was unevenly heating the devices and causing warping that would not happen during a normal house fire. I agreed with that assessment. So this time around, I used a uh, propane torch that had about a five or six inch diameter, uh, uh, 2,000 degree, based upon my thermometer, uh, 2,000 degree Fahrenheit uh, output on it. And so these were able to heat up the entire devices quite well. And the end results from the fire testing, as you can see, block plate, no real damage, just a bit of discoloration, and that's probably even like the oil from my, my hands that uh, got melted and screwed up. The Blockstream Metal also did very well, uh, just a bit of discoloration, but still quite readable. The cold bit passphrase, also pretty well. You can see that the, uh, the freehand written on the left, the freehand etching, did not hold up quite as well as the template etching in the middle and then the stamping on the right. The cold bit steel got uh, a lot of discoloration, but was still quite readable. The cold storage coins, unfortunately, did not do so well. Even after I tried my hardest uh, scrubbing away all of the uh, detritus that was left on them, I was unable to scan the QR code. So have to consider that to be a, a complete loss of the private key. Uh, crypto tag, kind of hard to tell, but uh, uh, it, it got a lot darker, but you could still read all the stamping. Uh, crypto Vault, very similar, uh, very dark, but still readable. Huddle Wallet, as you would expect, same as Blockstream Metal, still readable, no damage. The Kiwa Capsule, uh, unsurprisingly, all of the artistic glass and other metal pieces around it melted quite quickly, but the important bits that the private keys were on did uh, quite well and were st still readable. Seed Steel had a lot of discoloration, but was still quite readable as well. The sim bit, though it's kind of hard to tell from the photos, is also still readable, had no warping. Unfortunately, the steel disk had a lot of warping in the rails, and as you can hopefully see there, a number of the tiles fell out. So we'll have to consider that a complete loss as well. And of course, the steel wallet had uh, no real problems other than discoloration. So next up, I got a big tub of muriatic acid, which is generally used for etching concrete. Uh, you can buy this at really any uh, home improvement store. Threw it in there, came back uh, 12 hours later after most of the bubbling had stopped. And of course, the bubbling indicated that something was happening. So what, what really happened? Well, as far as we can tell, uh, not much happened to the block plate. It was still readable. Uh, Blockstream Metal, unfortunately, appears to have something going on with the rivets. And uh, the rivets got dissolved, therefore the pieces of the rails separated and all of the tiles fell out. So it would be very difficult to recover your seed phrase after that happened. Uh, the cold bit passphrase, as we can see, the freehand etched 
side on the left got completely wiped away, but the other deeper engravings and stampings were still quite legible. So perhaps if this was left in the acid long enough, then the other ones would, would also disappear, uh, but didn't have quite enough time to test all of that. The cold bit steel, um, I believe the freehand etching had a, a bit of data loss on that, but the uh, template etching and the stamping were still quite readable. Just for fun, threw the cold storage coin in there. It didn't get any better. Still uh, not readable on the QR code. Uh, CryptoTag did quite well and uh, could read pretty much all of the stamps that were still on there, other than maybe one or two light hammer taps uh, from the beginning. Uh, the Crypto Vault, it definitely had data loss on the freehand etch stuff. The template etch stuff was still legible, as was the stamping. And as expected, since these are same configurations, the, the HODL wallet seemed to have the same problem with the rivets, where the rivets dissolved in the acid and the entire device basically fell apart. Kiwa capsule appeared to have no problems whatsoever. Seed steel also did quite well, was still legible on all the three different uh, types of imprinting. And interestingly, the, the SIM bit seems to be the one tile-based device that survived it. Um, I guess whatever screws they're using are, are the same material that is also not susceptible. Uh, it's very hard to tell from this photo, but at the right angle, you could still read the letters that were on the tiles. And of course, steel disk got even worse as a result of having uh, rivets dissolve. Steel wallet itself, no problems. So the only thing left to do was, of course, to get a 20-ton hydraulic press and see what kind of deformations could be done to these steel devices and, and see whether or not it even really mattered. Now, is this something that the average person needs to worry about? Probably not, unless you plan on uh, having a boating accident while you're above the Mariana Trench, or, or maybe if you keep your devices in some sort of uh, abandoned mine shaft that collapses, or maybe if you're you know, keeping it in like a, a vault under a very tall building that collapses or something. But these are very extreme edge case uh, scenarios. So the block plate, uh, still quite readable. I think you could probably bend this thing six ways from Sunday and you'd still be able to read those uh, center punch dots on them. RIP, of course, to the block stream metal. Uh, from my previous testings last year, though, with the crypto steel based tile designs, they tend not to hold up to deformation because the rails separate and the tiles fall out. Cold bit passphrase looked pretty much the same, except for a slight bend to it. Cold bit steel, uh, very similar, still able to, to read uh, the same things we were after the acid test. Uh, just for fun, the cold storage coin I felt would probably deform a bit, and in fact it left imprints on the, uh, the press plate and even got stuck to the hydraulic press. I had to uh, kind of knock it off there. Uh, CryptoTag also did quite well, and I uh, was able to read all of the data off of it. Same with the Crypto Vault, uh, which of course had, I believe, lost some of the legibility from the freehand stuff, but it, it lost no additional data from deformation. Uh, rest in peace to the HODL wallet as well. The Kiwa capsule, uh, it really did not deform at all, so the, whatever they're using for, for those rings is highly resistant to pretty much everything, and thankfully the rest of the stuff that is decorative around it uh, is not important to the integrity of the data. Uh, Seed Steel also did quite well. Simbit was actually one of the most surprising. This is the only tile-based device that I've ever been able to deform uh, to this level where the tiles still manage to stay in it. And the explanation for that is probably just due to how small the tiles are and the fact that they are more malleable than uh, the crypto steel type tiles. So as you're deforming the device, all the bits of it, are, are, they're so, already so compacted tightly together that the whole thing will just deform at the same time and you don't end up having tiles popping out and flying away from the rails. So I was quite surprised that there was no data loss to the Simbit. Good job, Simbit. Uh, steel disk, of course, we lost early on. Steel wallet, same as block plate, did not lose any data as a result of deformation. So 
Uh, these are my completely unscientific uh, ratings that I came up with here. Uh, for, for most people, you probably only really care about the, the heat uh, results. And really, pretty much everything did well under uh, the, the heat results. But if you want to go the next step, if you want to be incredibly paranoid and safe against you know, the most extreme disaster scenarios that might happen to your devices, then you probably want to go with uh, one of these uh, devices at the top that shone through all of the stress tests with flying colors. So what can we really take away from these results? Well, the, the KISS principle is definitely in play. Uh, by keeping it simple, by having no moving parts, there, there's nothing really that can fail other than the metal itself. And we, you know, metal is very well known, uh, as we showed at the very beginning, the properties of various metals are very well known. Basically, the problems you start running into are when you're, you're creating more complex pieces of metal and putting them together in ways that then uh, create potential failure points. From a usability standpoint, um, etching and stamping is a real pain. Uh, it takes a bit of learning to, to start to get it right, and I definitely recommend using a template for etching. And for stamping, the best experience I had was with the uh, crypto tag because they, they actually come with a special stamping template where you place the crypto tag in there, then you, you place another template to hold the actual bits with the letters on them, and then, of course, you take that awesome hammer and just slam it down, and you don't, you don't have to worry about you know, crushing your fingers with a hammer. You don't have to worry about hitting the, the steel bit with the hammer and then having the steel bit fly across the room somewhere, uh, which was happening to me quite often on all of the other uh, metal devices that I was trying. And also, from a standpoint of the block plate and steel wallet, that center punch, just putting a single dot in there, takes basically no learning. Uh, it's very hard to screw that up. And so if I were to choose an optimal setup for these devices, I would recommend using something simple like a block plate or steel wallet to actually hold the seed. But then, because I would worry about uh, physical theft, you would want that to be a like BIP39 passphrase protected seed. So then you have to BIP38. Uh, so then you want to have uh, some other data with the passphrase and where are you going to put that passphrase? Well, that's when I think the cold bit passphrase really comes in handy. And so you'd probably want to have multiple of these different devices for redundancy in multiple different places. An alternative solution, of course, is go completely seedless, uh, go digital. Uh, that puts you in a very different uh, type of security scenario, and you have to have you know, special software to manage that. But I think I managed to get through all 65 slides in 15 minutes. So I uh, hope you learned something. It was fun, and we'll do it again. Yeah.